everyone. Uh, this video is about my dream shop and in the picture here is the shop that I'm specking out right now um, to build within probably ne by next winter, maybe starting it. Uh, not myself, but having a contractor build it. Uh, so th this video is going to include um, things to look for, things you want to do. I have built two garages, not myself of course, but had two garages built. Um, I'm going to talk about them, include pictures. Both of them are from different contractors and both of them are, they're all pole style garages, but they um, are going to be different styles. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of them, the prices, things that I've learned from them. Um, the biggest thing from this video, uh, if you don't take anything else away, the most important thing is make sure you get multiple quotes. Uh, don't just go to one builder or contractor and get a quote and start your build uh, unless you know them and that's exactly what you want and you don't care about price. But uh, I have three different quotes right now. And I'm going to talk about each one of them and their prices for the shop that was at the beginning of this video and talk a little bit about that. But the biggest thing, get multiple quotes from different builders because the prices change drastically. So it's very important. Uh, if you're building it yourself, it's a little bit different. But this video is more for, you could still get something, some ideas from this video if you're building your own garage, but uh, this video is more geared towards somebody that is going with a, a builder. So, to get started, uh, what I want to do with my dream shop, it's going to be a 60 by 80 shop area. The main shop is going to be 60 by 80 with 18 foot ceiling. So, talking it over with my girlfriend and we watched some videos she decided she wanted to add on like uh, we call it a living area but it's gonna have an office a bathroom and just like an area where we can maybe put in a wet bar or hang out and decided to put an L-shaped porch off of that so it got a little bit more elaborate I basically was just looking for a 60 by 80 shop with a high ceiling so I could get any equipment that I want to get in in the future but she uh, had some other ideas and now it's become something even bigger and I think it's pretty cool so I'm kind of set on it now um, but we'll talk about all the details and different prices next uh, I have to clear the land so all these buildings you pretty much have to have somebody come in and prep your site or you need to get it fairly level yourself. It doesn't have to be 100% level because they'll build your building level and you can bring the, the ground up to it, but you want to have it level if you can. So as I've said, I've had three or two garages built. This will be my third. Most people probably don't build that many or have that many garages built. Um, but the situation is, my house that I have currently, I had a garage built in 2012, and then now my current girlfriend, I'm looking to move in with her, and I'm giving up my garage, and I need uh, garage space to keep all my equipment and everything, and so to move in with her I need to build uh, a new shop and I decided I wanted to go bigger to house everything plus anything that I might get in the future so it's a lot bigger than my current garage but my current garage is in a small residential neighborhood on a small lot so it's as big as it can be and it's still is bigger than my house um, so yeah that's the reason that I'm looking to build a new a new shop, moving up to her place, I need uh, shop space. She has a couple garages now at her current house, but we're looking to possibly build a house also. So we're gonna build a shop close to where the new house location is gonna be. 
And like I said, I don't know what I'm going to get in the future, but uh, I plan on getting more equipment and I want this garage to house all of it. So if I get a combine, I can, I could pull it in this garage. If I get a semi truck, I could pull it in this garage and we'll just have a lot of space if not to do whatever we need to do in the garage. Uh, I've learned a lot of things from the previous two garages that we had built that I want to fine tune them and even implement some new things into this shop because this shop is going to be my last shop. If we build this house and shop, I'll be there f till I die. So I won't be building another one, but I want to do it right the first time. And I've learned from my garage and my dad's garage uh, things that I would like to do differently. Uh, the, like I said, the importance of getting multiple quotes I'm going to cover farther into this video. But there's such a price change you'll see with these numbers that I give you that it, it's probably going to really blow your mind how big a difference the first quote I got is compared to the last quote I got. Um, yeah, so we'll go over all those numbers farther on in this video. All right, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about my garage. Uh, my garage is a 30 by 30 pull style construction garage. I had a, the shell built and then I poured the floor, had the floor poured inside after I uh, had some guys I know uh, do the floor. They, uh, so it was a a little bit cheaper, I think, doing it that way. I paid for the material and I paid them for the labor. That's how they wanted to do it. And uh, it wasn't super expensive. Uh, there's pictures here that I'll include. I, I put down the um, PEX tubing in the floor for radiant floor heat. It's not currently connected, but it's there. I have the manifold. All I need to get is a hot water tank and a pump and we could hook up the radiant floor heat and that would be a pretty nice option right now it's not heated at all uh, when i'm there and i use it in the winter i just use a torpedo heater it works fine it takes uh 20 minutes and it you can work in a sweatshirt comfortably but uh my garage is a little bit different pull style i mean i guess there's all different kinds of pull style type garages but this one is in a residential neighborhood so i wanted it to fit in and not look like a barn so i have osb walls and vinyl siding shingle roof um, this garage at, at this at my house also has storage trusses so you'll see in the picture here the upstairs storage trusses and then we put the steps in afterwards um yeah, so it's a 30 by 30 with a 10 by 18 porch on the side with uh, concrete underneath, of course, but it's just a, basically a lean-to porch. We put the, the uh, under part of the roof off it, fascia on. Uh, my garage, so let me talk about, I told you the siding is vinyl, the roof shingle, the garage door. I have one large garage door and it was like one of the bigger expenses of the garage. Uh, my garage door is 10 feet high by 18 feet wide with insulated uh, windows in the garage door and the windows I have at about 8 feet. So the windows are up higher. They let light in but nobody can see in my garage. That's important with this new shop we're doing. All the windows are going to be up higher, so nobody can look in and see what you have in there. If you have a lot of high dollar tools or equipment, you just don't want people looking in there and knowing what you have. So, yeah, I, caught, I only have windows in the garage door, none in the, in the walls or anything like that in this garage. As I said, it's a 30 by 30 garage. Uh, the concrete I had poured five inches thick and it is, has the uh, fiberglass resin in it to make it a little bit stronger PSI. I said it has the radiant floor uh, PEX tubing in it. Uh, my garage I built in 20, had built in 2012 
and I had an outfit out of Ohio build it. They're kind of like a, a lumber yard. So it cost 18000 and some change for them to build the shell. That was constructed and everything. And then the floor I paid a couple years later was like $3,500 for the concrete floor. And the last thing that I really want to cover with my garage, uh, it has a 12, it has a 12 foot ceiling. As I said, it has the storage trusses. I believe the trusses are two foot on center for that. And the, the pillars, the posts on that garage, the corners are six by sixes and all the other are eight foot on center and they're four by sixes which i would have done all six by sixes if i had to do it over or they're doing these laminate posts but i'm going to get more into detail on that mine has six by sixes in the corners four by sixes every eight feet but i wish i would have done all six by sixes or the laminate po uh, posts and then the other thing that i don't like about that garage that i wouldn't do again is have the uh the the posts are in the ground in concrete so they're going to rot eventually and need to be replaced and it's probably going to be a, a big job so yeah i shouldn't have done that there's uh, other ways around that now and we'll talk about that in a later part of this video so next is we're going to talk about my dad's garage. I pretty much spec'd it out and he paid for it to be built. And that's at our farm um, up north where my uh, all my farming equipment is. So this garage was built by another company in Ohio, out of Ohio, out of Canfield, Ohio. And I think it's called, it's called Pull Barns Direct. I got a quote from all three of these on the new shop or two, these two plus an additional one on the new shop. Um, and this garage is your basic pole building. It is steel siding, steel roof, and it's pretty basic. The garage doors are not insulated. My garage door on my, at my house is insulated. That's, oh, I didn't cover that, I think. That garage door was $3,500 with no garage door opener. So it was a, a pretty big expense out of 18000 and some change of the garage. This garage has just the cheaper non-insulated double. It's not a double. It's two garage doors, two single garage doors. And my dad just wanted smaller garage doors, and I regret it. We should have went bigger. But the ceiling in this garage is a 10-foot ceiling, and the garage doors are 10 feet wide by 8 feet tall and I can barely get my trackers in there and it's a really big pain in the butt. I wish we would have just got one big one in the middle. Probably end up changing it eventually. But uh, cause the gable ends usually a non load bearing wall so you can do a lot bigger garage doors I come to find out with the shop I'm building now I've learned a lot and I'll get into that. But so my dad's garage he did two things differently from mine other than like the exterior. He's, he's metal siding with the wainscot and a metal roof where mine's shingle and vinyl. But uh, he had all six by sixes all the way around the garage. Mine was six by sixes in the corner, four by sixes every eight feet. His were all six by sixes. And it's a little bit better because he had his posts encased in a, like a PVC sleeve or a vinyl sleeve. So his six by six posts are in a vinyl sleeve in the ground and concrete. Still not the best option, but better than mine. So that's a step up. We still don't have a floor in that garage, but we'll be getting one. So yeah, we still have that expense. We got to get a floor in that garage, but that garage is holding up real nice. No fading or anything on the steel. It's probably four or five years old now. But you get a pretty decent warranty. I think it's like a 40-year warranty on the steel. 
but it's good. There's pictures of that included. And that garage cost $13,000 and some change built. It is 32 feet wide by 40 feet deep. So it's a little bit bigger than mine, not as tall, doesn't have the storage trusses, but even cheaper. I mean, 13,000 and some change and you got a 32 by 40 shop. So a shell anyways, so not bad. And then next, I'm gonna talk about my dream shop. That's the pictures you'll see here. This is all drawing the scale right now. It's a 60 by 80 shop with two 24 foot wide by 16 foot high garage doors on the eave side and one 16 by 16 garage door on the gable end and i'll explain why i did all that and an 18 foot ceiling no storage trusses so 60 by 80 main shop and then the office space is going to be 20 feet deep by 50 feet long and you see in the pictures why it's lined up with the back side of the shop it's even with the back side of the shop but there's a 10 foot offset in the front and that's for this wraparound porch that you can see in the picture and we got windows up there so that's going to be like a hangout spot there's going to be an office a bathroom in there and then it's going to extend 10 feet into the main shop with a mezzanine above it for storage. It's going to be a 10 foot mezzanine steps going up to it and just basically storage up there. Um, in the shop, it's where it extends 10 feet. So initially I was going with a nine foot ceiling in the office area, but after talking to builders, it's going to, be a 12 foot ceiling if we want it lower you could put a drop ceiling in but it's going to be 12 feet because the porch outside the overhang just the way that it's constructed it needs to be a higher ceiling so we're going with a 12 foot ceiling there but it's going to drop down where it goes out into the garage to nine feet or ten feet so probably nine but possibly ten just so when you're up on top on the second floor mezzanine you have enough room up to the ceiling and it's not too short or too low with the higher with a 12 foot ceiling and the 18 foot shop ceiling i know it'll peak in the middle so you'll have more room there but i think we're going to have to have the mezzanine floor a little bit lower and I could still, from the gable end, if I ever get a semi-truck with a trailer, I have 70 feet in that 16 by 16 door. Um, and then on the front, I'm putting the 224s by 16s. They're a little overkill, but I would be able to pull in a combine or anything, really. It's not really needed. One door would probably be fine, but that's what I want to do. The only thing you have to watch with that is if you put those doors in you have to get a beam put in they'll have to put a beam in for support versus built board and building your header boards for those garage doors but if you put big garage doors in the gable end you can get away with it because it's a non-load bearing wall so those are things to consider for price um, i got windows they're like three by five windows they're all going to be up high at 16 feet even with the top of the garage doors for letting light in basically four on the back two on the gable side and maybe one in the front depending on what i do with the man door uh yeah wayne's coat it's going to be steel siding on the outside steel roof um and then, yeah, so prices. Oh, let me talk about the pole style. So these poles are all going to be 6x6. Six six. They might be laminated posts, so they put a bunch of 6x6s like, six together to make your laminated post versus having 6x6. Uh, six six. Either way, doesn't matter to me. But the big thing is I want concrete poured in the ground like a footer, and they put these 
uh, U-shaped clamps with rebar off of them. I'm not sure what they're called, but you can look them up. Uh, R&R building, R Buildings on YouTube, he uses all these uh, anchors. Basically, basically, it's just an L-shaped bracket with rebar coming off the bottom. It goes into the concrete. And then we'll set these brackets. These are Midwest Permacolumn brackets. So we get these questions all the time. They're uh, sturdy wall 630Ts, and these are for, or actually it's 63 OT, and the OT is for Ohio Timberland. These are made specifically for Ohio Timberland Post. The concrete purlins, purlins, I think they're called, and your wood will not touch the ground or, con or go into the concrete, so it'll preserve it for a lot longer from rotting. So I'm going that route with this shop because that's the best way to do it, I feel. So I got my floor plan on here. You can kind of see what it looks like with the dimensions. And the pictures are pretty much accurate. We're probably going to change some colors. We're not sure what we're going to go with yet, except for charcoal gray on the roof and the wainscot. But we're not sure what the other main color is going to be yet, but that's minor details. Um, these buildings all have at least a five-year construction warranty and 40-year warranty on the steel. So that's pretty good. Um... What else? Oh uh, yeah, for, I'm gonna have a garage door on the inside from the office living area into the shop. I want it to be a 16 foot wide garage door by eight foot high in glass. So you can see from in your hangout office living space into the shop. So that'll be pretty cool. And what else as far as details? The garage doors, I've had to mess around with it a little bit. Um, for price and everything so let me talk a little bit about price because this is this video is starting to get a little long so just uh, I've covered most of the uh, important details and now I'm gonna go into the price um, so the first quote I got was from uh, Morton buildings I've never dealt with them but they were close to where we're building and I, so I stopped in started talking to them first and then we started watching videos and realized Morton Buildings is pretty much they're like the snap-on of pull, pull uh, style shops they uh, Zach from MN Millennial Farmer his shop was built by Morton Buildings the shell anyways and then his interior was finished by somebody else they knew. This was built in 2013. We had the outer shell built by Morton Buildings. The interior was actually finished with Menards materials from a local guy that we've got just up the road from us. And the concrete was done by our bin crew, the guys who have built our, all of our grain bins. Morton Buildings is pretty pricey, come to find out. Uh, I got a quote from them. I'll break it down for you, but they're definitely, they were a little scary at first and that was the first quote and it was way off from what I was thinking this shop was going to cost. I mean, I know it's big, but it's still a pole style shop. So let me get into the meat and potatoes of that. So their workmanship is great from what I've seen, but I also want like the best bang for my buck most people do um, so if you have the money they're a great company and they make really nice shops that's why they've been in business forever uh, and pretty much across the nation but the, their quote for my shop that you're seeing here finished with the floor with still no not even counting the heat and finished walls on the living area just Basically, the shell, the interior walls and insulation, and the concrete floor was $293,656. And I was kind of floored by that. I was like, wow, that's like, 
a nice house and it's just a garage it is big but that's kind of a steep price he where i started getting a little like leery about the quote first off i didn't ask him if he would do it or not but he didn't give me like an itemized like he didn't give me an itemized list of everything what this building material these windows cost this that's how they do it but it doesn't show show that it just lists everything without the prices and I think that's how they get some of these markups because he told me the porch that we want that L-shaped porch which is 10 feet out wrap around it'll be 60 by 20 it he said it was $25,000 for that porch and that's kind of crazy that 25,000 is more than I paid for my garage at my house with the concrete floor. But he's saying just that porch is 25,000, so that was kind of crazy. The floor, the concrete floor at 4 inches thick, which I'm going to have to go th thicker for semis and heavy equipment, he said was $28,000 for the concrete floor. And then we'd have to add money if we wanted to put radiant floor heat in, which we probably would. And the garage doors, the two 24 by 16 garage doors and the 16 by 16 garage door and the 16 by 8 garage door inside that's glass was $25,000 for the garage doors. So that's pretty crazy. And then he gave me a quote, the shell, just the outside shell, no interior, with the concrete floor was $214,472 for just the shell and the concrete floor. So that's still more than I want to spend on, a, on this shop. All right, so next I'm going to get to Bernard Daniels. And all these are quoted kind of the same way with the garage doors, except for this one. I'll explain that. Um, but the construction's all the same. Two uh, cupolas up top, uh, the porch, 60 by 80 shop, the living space. We're not going to live there. We just call it the living space. Um all that's the same, steel siding. But Bernard Daniels, who built my garage at my house, their shell and insulation with the uh, inside walls, no concrete floor, built was $146,000. So right there we just shaved uh, $100,000 without and it doesn't have the concrete floor but just going with another talking to another builder we're down to 146,000 plus the concrete which will be expensive but still won't be that first quote expensive so we just shaved a hundred thousand dollars with that price there because let me that shell with the uh, the shell from Morton was 214 472 but that all that doesn't include the interior walls and insulation this is the outside walls in and the uh, in, interior walls with insulation for 146 the only difference with this is their garage doors the two e garage doors they were going to 16 by 16 so they didn't have to put the steel beam in for uh, sub added support and they were putting a 20 by 16 garage door on the gable end, which I'd be all right with that. They were just bringing the cost down by moving garage door sizes around. I'm not stuck on the garage door size. That's just what I wanted, the 20, two 24 by 16s and the 16 by 16 on the gable end. Um, and then last was Pole Barns Direct. And they who are they built my dad's garage up at our farm, and their total quote was one fourteen six ninety six, and thirty three thousand of that one fourteen six ninety six was the labor for it to be built. So they broke it down and 
basically show you everything. Um, that's without a floor, so no floor in that. It's a shell, and that's no insulation or walls. He's still working on a quote. I'll, I'll add it in a comment or something when I get it, but that's just the shell. But that is the garage doors that I want. That's two 24 wide by 16s on the eave side and a 16 by 16 on 16 by 16 on the gable side. So, but that's a shell with no floor for 114 696. So that's even cheaper yet. And as I said, 33,000 for the labor. So. It's definitely very important that you get multiple quotes. That's the biggest part. If you take away anything from this video, get multiple quotes. And they're all built the same. I want them all on those concrete pillars with, uh, with the brackets, with the rebar in the concrete so the wood is not in the ground to rot. But if you have any questions, hopefully I spelled out most of the details here. This video got a little long, 30 minutes, but... If you have any questions, shoot me a comment and let me know what you think. But this is my dream shop that I'm hoping to build. Hopefully we start it next winter. Uh, that's another thing I want to talk about real quick. They also told me, not all of them, but you, this might be something you look into. Like Bernard Daniel said, if you build in the winter, they give you a discount to keep there. Because most people don't want to build in the winter. Most people build in the summer months. But if you build in the winter to keep their guys employed... They give you a discount, but that's another thing to keep in mind. And there's a lot more that goes into this as we get farther into it and maybe start the construction. I'll talk about it more, but uh, that's my dream shop, and that's the two other garages that we had built and some of the details. So I hope this video helps you if you're planning on building a garage or your dream shop. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good one.